finally in season three on wealth principle three understand the four types of money now if you're here to make more money it's because you might be lacking money if you're here to do less work it's because you've got a lot of money and you're sick and tired of losing all your time hands to the camera if either one of those is true for you you got money or you got time, but in life, we have one or the other at any given point. We seem to be in this fluctuation of going back and forth. Now, there may be people who are saying, man, I ain't got money and I got no time. Well, that's because you've got a situation that you've got to work on up here. You've got to look and work on one of those to get a little bit more of another. You're actually now comparing yourself to other people. But if you were to really look at what you have, you probably have... A little bit more money than time or a little bit more time than money just not a lot of either hence the camera if you've been there too didn't have a lot of either one right not a lot of money and a lot, not a lot of time that's because it was on its way who's been through one of those moments where you just pushed really 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 hard and there was no money no money no money and then something just broke and on the other side there was you know a, a nice little release of money who's had those big surges surges of income excellent excellent totally worth the push but right before Right before my marketing company, uh, Michael Gabriel says it all the time. He says, man, we're three feet from gold. <laughs> we're just three, we just got a, a little bit further right there at the, at the point where the funnel pops off and it, all, the, all the leads come through and you can work with more people. It's the same in your business, right? Three feet from gold. These four types of money are powerful, powerful, understand, powerful assets. We're going to talk about them today. Before I do... For everybody who's new, the 52 Weeks to Wealth are 52 wealth principles. They're real estate principles. They're business principles. They are designed to double your income, double your net worth. We do this every year. So you can under, imagine we have three years under our belt. There are people in here who are not just millionaires, but multimillionaires. There are people in here who started three years ago who are making less than 50000 who are now making a quarter million, who are now making 100000 who are now financially free or have quit their jobs. In fact, it is not just possible for these people that you see on the screen, but each one of these people that you see on the screen has been through the mentorship and has committed to doubling their income, has committed to doubling their net worth. If they don't start taking action, they hear from me or one of the coaches. Hands to the camera if you've gotten a message from one of us and you're like, man, I got to go do some stuff after that conversation. Yes, we're in touch. We're moving people forward because it's a greater mission. 100 millionaires inspired to build 100 millionaires. It's not just about us teaching for the sake of teaching. We want to see your results. We want to see you become successful. We want to see you then go do what we are doing for you, for others. Because coaching and training can be a lot of work. And at some point, we all want to retire. Coaches, it would be nice to be able to take some of these days off eventually one day, right? Now, we were all having fun. <laughs> but it's true. There is... There is room for you, each one of you, to go and teach at least one person, one other person, how to become a millionaire. Hands can if you commit to teaching others how to become wealthy once you've got yours. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I appreciate each one of you. So the four types of money are as follows. Profit, income, flow, and equity. Not necessarily in that order. I'll start with income. That's usually the first one that everybody understands. Now, income is something that you've earned from active active work. The other, well, there's two that are relatively passive. And then there's one that's, that's really interesting. Most people don't actually have income. See, income is you've gone out and you've worked and you brought it in and it stays there. Income stays in. What most people have is something called flow. Flow is where the money comes in, the money goes out. Money comes in, money goes out. When it comes in, money goes out. Get money on Friday. On Monday, it's all gone. Hands to the camera if you know what flow is. You got some flow in your life too. <laughs> Hands to the camera if all you had at one point was flow. You remember that? <laughs> We've all had those crazy moments. Even the millionaires, even the multimillionaires. There were moments where it's like, man, like, okay, I went to work. I did seven days. I did 14 days. I did 30 days. And at the end of it, you know, I remember my bank account was just sitting at $38 for an entire year. I was... 19 or 20 years old and I was working and for an entire year, my bank account stayed $38 or $36. And I, I remember going to the bank, looking and pulling my statement out and saying, 
what is going on? I used to stack cash like a beast. I used to just take money, put money in, put money in. And what happened was I bought a truck. I bought a truck and I used the money, down payment, put it into the vehicle. And then every single month I had a monthly truck payment. Every single month I was partying with my friends. Every week I was partying with my friends. I was going out more often. I was spending money on you know the girls. I was doing things every single week. And it always seemed to be all I had was flow. I didn't have any money to put in the bank account. We remember these days. We know we have friends that are still doing this, right? We know people who are still out there doing this. Yes. Well, it wasn't until something snapped. I looked at that bank account and I said, man, because I used to go every week and I had stopped. I got, got depressed. I didn't have money to put into the bank. So I stopped going to the bank. I stopped getting excited about you know stacking cash, about building up my net worth, about building up wealth. I kind of forgot about financial freedom for an entire year. But something in me said, man, I got to get back on this. And so I started saving again. I, I cut back. I started telling my friends, man, I'm not going out this weekend. Nope, not doing it. I stopped driving you know, to far distances with the truck. I, I started putting $100 a week aside. And then it became $200 a week. And then it became you know, $250 a week. And now it's like this ridiculous number of 10% of everything I make goes back into the savings account. Just ridiculous flows. Flow doesn't control you, but it is the lifeblood of your business. We all have flow and we have the understanding in our personal lives, but in our business, it is necessary. You don't want to reduce flow in a business. You want to increase flow, especially if the business is paying for marketing. Kevin Pereira was just talking about, he's got marketing going for his real estate business. So you want to increase the flow because the flow means more is coming back, right? In our, in, <laughs> we have too much flow. <laughs> I think Ron and I, are, our flow is somewhere like forty or $50,000 a month, it, or it's, it's somewhere in that ballpark. It's been that high. I know it has, but we, if we're, Ron, we're, are we close to like 38 now? $38,000 a month is flow. What is that figure? Uh, yeah, it's closer to 40. Yeah. So $40,000 a month is flow. So our flow account gets down to 40. That's basically zero to us. Hands to the camera if that's a cool situation. Just know the flow is somewhere in that ballpark. That's money that just comes in and comes out. You need it in real estate. There's mortgages, there's property management, there are uh, repairs and projects that need to be worked on. Anything above the flow is the next type of money we call profit. Profit is the money you get to keep. So we talked about income. Income is an important piece and most broke people only ever talk about income. If, if you can get them talking about money, which is hard to do, they're very scared about money. They hide their money. They hide the conversation. They don't want to talk about the size of their money or the shape of their money or where their money is. Money is always going to be hidden by something. So, but if you can get them talking about their money, the first thing to talk about, not talking about the bank, but not talking about the stocks. They're talking about how much they made, how much they make, how much they make. If somebody thinks I'm rich, this is what they ask me. Well, how much do you make? And I already know I don't want to have this conversation. It's like, dude, like, how much do I make? Like, what do you mean? Like, make, make money? I don't make money, man. How much do I collect? <laughs> we can have that conversation. How much do I collect each year? If you ask me how much I pay taxes on, it'll be a smaller dollar amount. <laughs> right? There's, there's a, a misunderstanding. <clears throat> income is not the only thing. Income is just one part of the formula. There are four types of money, and you have to understand these four types of money. Now, profit is one of our favorites. Profit's the one you can invest in other things. Profit's the one you can take out of the initial investment and run it into your life, right? You can go on vacations with profit. You can enjoy you know, different experiences with profit. You pay for kids' college with profit. Hence, if you know what profit is, you've seen that before. Yes, we like profit. Profit's like part of what it's all about. Profit can be invested in different asset classes. You can be invested in crypto or stocks or other businesses or real estate. If you haven't started in real estate, you can take profit from your business and invest in a real estate. For real estate investors, we typically take profit and we buy more properties, right? Buy another business, buy another piece of real estate. This is what profit's for, isn't it? Shoot, if there's... Oh, I don't want to give this next one away yet. Okay. But if the next one that I'm about to talk about is there, we might use some of that to go buy the next property. We're just like, profit, 
this other one. We're just going to use it to buy as much property as we possibly can. Real estate investors, you know where I'm, I'm leading to the next, the fourth type of money, equity. Now, equity is the hardest thing to explain to a broke person. They don't understand what it is. In fact, not even just a broke person, my own brother. About two years ago, my brother joined the mentorship with us all. He was he joined the community and he asked me, he's like, bro, like, what is equity? I heard you saying it on, he didn't even have the guts to ask in front of everybody, which by the way, who's ever asked me a question in front of everybody in the community before? Hands to the camera if you've done that before. Yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. My brother didn't want to ask me questions in front of anybody, didn't want to look dumb. It's helpful to ask questions. So anyway, he asked me, he said, bro, what, you, you mentioned a word, uh, you mentioned this equity thing. What is, what is, what is equity? And I was like, um, I've been buying real estate for the last eight years. You, you don't know what, I haven't ever explained equity to you. And he said, man, like, I'm sure you said it. I just don't know what it is. So this is not for everybody who I can see faces on the cam uh, camera right now. This is for everybody else who's on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or wherever Jem may split this up and put it out for content wise. So you equity is the difference, right? On our net worth trackers, everybody who's doing their net worth trackers, against the camera, who's doing it this week, who's going to do it right, right now on this call with us. <laughs> equity is the difference between what the asset is worth. So take a piece of real estate, like Melanie has uh, a beautiful house in Westport that she bought for less than it's worth. So let's say she paid around 600,000 and the property became worth, I'm going to say, she says it's worth you know 850, but I'm going to say it's closer to a million by the time she sells it. And she only owes, well, I don't know, I'm ballparking on this one, but we'll say 400000 The equity is the difference, right? The equity is the difference between what she owes, not what she paid. What she paid doesn't matter. What she owes versus what somebody else is willing to pay. Does that make sense? What the property actually sells for. So that could be $600,000, $500,000 or $600,000. It's sitting in a property that she bought and bought right and leveraged, used the bank's money still owes money on. So the money she owes versus what is what it's worth right now. Equity is the money. Me and Mike and Mitch and Ron and Terry and Ryan and the other Mitch and the other guy I'm, I'm forgetting right now and Christine and Darina, we all talk about capital appreciation, like, like getting the equity, the net worth. Hence, if you've heard me talk about doubling your net worth, Double your income, double your net worth, because it's the most important thing to do. <laughs> it's so important. If you can just increase your equity, you can make more money by investing it in something else. That, that's, that's the secret. Me and Mike Shine were sitting there one day, and I, I feel like we all kind of had this epiphany at the same time. It was me, Mike, and Mitch, and we were talking about the asset classes that we've done well in. We were talking about my REITs because this is back when I used to heavily invest in real estate investment trusts. And I'm like, yeah, these things cash flow, man. I'm making 12% a year, 12%. And I was excited about it. And Mike's like, and Mike was had just recently started to get in a Tesla. And he said, man, like I used to think that was a great idea, but now I'm watching this, this Tesla make moves. Like I just doubled my money. And, you know, we're talking about the value of doubling your money. And I was on a call last night with Ryan uh, McDermott. He was showing me his new PowerPoint, his new slideshow, and his new calculator for teaching people how fast they could double their money, what the percentages would be. Uh, and if you have a chance to have that conversation with Ryan, it is, I'm sitting there as a multimillionaire thinking, man, I want this calculator. <laughs> I, want, I want this on my website. So like everybody can use this thing because it was so cool to see like the, what return on investment would retire you or get you to a goal. And, and like, Mike Shine was like, man, 100% return. That's the whole point. That's the double penny. How often can I double my, my net worth? How often can I double my income? So the four types of money, people focus too much on income. Income is like worthless if your flow is too high, right? If the flow, if your income doesn't exceed flow, you're broke, right? You're losing money. So your, your flow has to be watched. Watched, paid attention to, evaluated, played with, worked on. So it brings in more money, more results, more resources into the business. And the income has to be increased at all time. Now, I was on, I've been on probably close to 140 calls. Well, maybe it was close to like 160 calls in the last two weeks with some of our past students, with new people who are coming into the community, with uh, coaches, mentors, millionaires. And I've just really done this, get in touch with everybody who I care about, everybody I want to really like talk to in 
in a, an intense manner. And anybody who had time for me, like I know I sent a request or I sent a request to a lot of you guys were busy. So that's okay too. But the, the conversations led to one thing, one realization. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I say learn it, do it, automate it. They miss the order. They miss the process. See, learn it, do it, delegate it. Ties into wealth principle three to get the right side of the four types of money. When you're learning it, we're, we're all in education right now. So yes, we're learning, we're growing, great. When you're doing it, you're making money. You physically are actively increasing income. Physically, actively increasing income. Most business owners, when they go to automate, they automate the process side of things. The process side, right? Hence the camera, if you've ever thought, man, I'm, I'm getting so busy, I got to go hire somebody to do the work I'm doing. Anybody ever felt that? Yes. But that's where the business ends up going through ups and downs. Who's also had their business go through ups and downs? See, like it just like this seesaw income down, income down. The reason is because you automated the wrong thing. Because I have never talked about it, but after this past two weeks, I realized the importance of this conversation. You automate your sales and marketing piece first, you have to automate the lead flow piece. And like Dr. Terry Wager is always talking about, don't abdicate, delegate. Don't abdicate. Don't give up on it. Just be like, hey, you're, you're in sales now. Take over. Be there in sales with them. Prove their metal. Get the in income coming in. And then bring in somebody else to the point where your sales side is replaced high enough. Many of the people in our community are not strong in sales to begin with. I know some people in the community who are high C's, high introverts. That, no, it's not you, Peter. You're, you're definitely one of our better salespeople. Same with you, Kevin. In fact, a lot of you are realtors. You guys are very strong salespeople. But there are some people who would rather not be out there doing it. Well, then definitely replace yourself and scale up yourself if sales has been like a pain point for you. But if sales has been something you're good at, it's still replace yourself. Grow yourself. Automate. The fulfillment is the easiest thing to hire. It's very easy to hire people to just do stuff, to just fix things, work on things, show up and do stuff. Sales, without it, your business dies. We're getting this? Learn it, do it, automate it. Get that income up and automate the income, review the flow, and keep that flow moving in the right directions that brings in more money, more money into the business either improving the properties, like if we're real estate investors, we improve the properties. Or if you're not a real estate investor, if you're a business owner, you're improving buying assets for your business, like Melanie does subways. So she's improving the buildings. She goes and renovates those. Or she's uh, paying for training for her employees. You want to be increasing income on any aspect of your, your business. For us, we spend money on the 100 Millionaire Summit. Hence the camp, you're at the 100 Millionaire Summit last year, 2021. Oh man, I'm spending even more this year. We're going big for 2022. We're going to spend a lot more money. We're putting a thousand multifamily investing, entrepreneur, business mind, millionaire people into the room this year. Hence the Caffeine, you're going to be there in 2022. Yes. Oh, I'm excited. 2022, this, this money, this room is money. This room is relationships. Like, best friend status relationships will be in this room like strangers that you never knew will become your best friends in three days because you're on the same journey you're going to be making money together building together so the hundred million is just getting bigger right so when reinvest back into things that drive your business drive your mission and you have to have a mission and that's that's a conversation for another wealth principle but you have to have a very powerful mission. For us, we're on a mission to build 100 millionaires who are inspired to build 100 millionaires. Step one. Step two, build millions of millionaires. We're just proving the process. We're learning it. We're doing it. And the website that we built, now, Alchemist Nation, hands again if you're already on Alchemist Nation, you're already out there testing it with us, you're beta testing with us, you know, proving systems, creating courses, taking courses. We're automating it. Once Alchemist Nation is at its peak where I want it to be, we'll be able to build millionaires within a year automated. They'll come through the process and be a millionaire. Each one of you, your questions, we're learning. We're leveraging the systems that AI allows us to do. We're learning from your questions, learning from your results, learning what you're doing. Keep asking questions. Keep giving feedback. Keep taking action. This is more than just 
you guys and your success, which by the way, is very important to me because the more successful you are, the faster your success happens, the more I'm going to push that documentation down. Or I'm going to say, let's go and do more of that. Right. So we, you young guns, you, you killers, the people who are unicorns, who are crushing a million dollars in a year or a million dollars in two years. We're documenting what you guys are doing. Make sure you are too. <laughs> and scarce you commit to make sure you're keeping track of what's working. Keeping track of what's working, keeping track of what's not working. Awesome. It, it means a lot to us because with, with all of this, we're capable of scale. And we can change. You know, I used to say it five years ago. I'd say, man, one day I'm going to change the world. I'm going to teach people. I'm going to show. I'm going to educate. And at the time, I could not say it out loud because nobody would believe me. Hence, Karen, if you know you've had big thoughts like that, that you're going to make some big differences. Absolutely. Now, when I say it, people are like, yeah probably going to happen. That's probably true. You know, five years from now, the world will be a very different place and they'll know what Alchemist Station is because we came here first. Because each one of us has gone through a process. Each one of us is documenting, thinking about, by the way, the most valuable thing you can do is think about what, what did work, what has worked for you, what hasn't worked for you. Get clear about it. So when somebody does come to you and ask, when you're the millionaire, when you're the multimillionaire, when somebody comes to you and says, you know, Melanie, how'd you do it? You can very clearly say, well, these were the real core things that I did. It was this step, this step, this step. And these are the things that held me back or that I've seen hold other people back. Stay away from these and move towards these. If you can do these, you're going to be successful. Hence, the camera, if you commit to documenting your success, paying attention to it, I promise it will make it faster for you. Speeds up the process for you on your success if you're documenting for others. Ask me how I know. I'm 36 years old, well, not yet. Technically 35 years old, 35 years old. And I've been financially free since I was 30 because the entire time, in two years, it took me two years, I was dedicated to this community before this community even knew about me. I was dedicated to this mission, this process before anybody who I was committed to knew that I existed, knew that I was out there doing it. That's the kind of the level of insanity you've got to have. You got to be a little crazy, right? To believe in what you're going to do. In fact, any any great real estate agent, what about great real estate agents on the on the camera right now on the phones? Let's go. Hands up. Awesome. Awesome. You recognize before you walk into that house, you own that sale. You own that listing. It is your listing before you even get out there. You got the mindset, it is yours. How do we do that? Because in our heads, we're already in belief that we're going to do whatever it takes to take care of that listing to take care of that seller. Whatever it takes, the person on the other end of that door is going to love us no matter what. I will do whatever it takes to make sure I gain their trust, their liking, and them knowing who I am and sticking in their head when I leave. So it's the same exact thing with the community you're looking to build, your, hundred, your future 100 millionaires that you're looking to build, this 100 people that you're looking to serve. I just think about them, right? When I think about the people I'm looking to build, the people that I don't know yet or that don't know me yet, but I know who they are or I'm looking for them. And maybe maybe we don't even know who we are yet, but I have in my head that hundred people who I'm looking to serve this year. And every year I adjust, I adjust, right? New, new dream 100, just level up a little bit. Who, write this down. This is an exercise for us to do. We do these exercises every week. If you like, if visualize, who would you love to serve? Like who... Who would you like to save or help or get to the next level or hang out with? D's love to hang out with powerful people, right? So hang out with. I's like to chill with fun people. Like, who'd you like to spend time doing things with? S's, who'd you like to help? C's, who would you like to leave you alone? We can... <laughs> no, kidding. C's, who would you like to read your book? Who would you like to read your blog or, or listen to your story of the house? Because these like to be the ones who know how to do stuff and share their knowledge. Write this down, write it now, write it down now, because it's important, right? And just a hundred people, right? Just a hundred people, a type of audience, a, a group of people who would be listening to. There's an article that Mitch Jorsky sent me a while back. It said uh, a thousand true fans. All you need is a thousand true fans thousand people who really believe in what you're doing you can be a millionaire from a thousand true fans so let's let's cut it back make it easier just a hundred hundred core people that you'd be serving documenting think about it your life the, the path you're following there are a hundred people who want to follow your path 
to get to your million dollars, to get to your financial freedom. There is a hundred people out there. And I always had this in my head. This is why I wrote the books. I wrote two books before I ever published my first book. Those other two books I've thrown out the window. I, I will never publish them. They're complete garbage. But I wrote, I was always writing books. I always wanted to create something for, for people. I just, I realized now like those two books were complete, like, terrible mindset. I wasn't the right person. So may, maybe we'll get the books written, but they may not be the ones you publish. Hence, Karen, if that's okay too. <laughs> Absolutely. But be writing your book. Be writing the book that is going to teach somebody else how to do what you're doing today. The process, even if you got to go a little technical on the book, and the book doesn't necessarily have to be a book. It could be virtual, right? It could be a video training. It could be a, a vlog. Mine was a vlog. In a lot of cases, I go back and forth between video and blogging. And my content has been, if you go to YouTube, you want to see my book, go to YouTube, go back five years ago, go back seven years ago. Those are the videos I was putting out. That's what I was teaching, right? So if you want to see the stuff that I was writing seven years ago, I was, I was video blogging on YouTube. That was me writing my first book, teaching people how to do what I had already learned how to do. We're getting this different ways to do it. But the idea is everything you learn should be thought from the place of teaching and you will learn faster. The four types of money are focused on income, profit, which means the business is profiting and throwing off money, flow, which means the business is spending money, and equity. Equity is how you get rich. Equity is how you transfer wealth into something else. Income alone cannot retire you. Hence the camp, if you understand that. Income alone can't, can't do it. And flow won't save you. Flow is fun. I love, I love flow, right? Flow is how I buy the shirts, 100 millionaires, right? <laughs> flow is how I buy the cups. It's how I pay for events. Flow is fun. Best part of the company is spending money, right? I love it. Marketing, right? Getting those new videos done. We spent $12,000 at the summit on just video. Hence the camp, if you were in one of the videos from the summit, 100 million or something, you were in one of the videos, you know you were, hell yeah. We got everybody, we captured everybody at the event. It's gonna be even bigger this year. So if you have, if you're listening right now and you haven't joined the mentorship, I apologize, it's probably my fault. Hands to the camera, if you think everybody who's listening would make a ton of money, they'd make at least $20,000 if they spent the 2,000 to get into the mentorship, hands down, right? A 10X return, 10 times return, excellent. Hands down, if you believe in the next year or two, anybody who signs for the mentorship would double their income, at least double their income or double their net worth, at least. Excellent. Excellent. Let's give everybody who's been in the mentorship a round of applause. You know what you're talking about because <laughs> you are doing it. You are on track. You are on the path. And if you're listening and you're not sure how to do it and you're not sure what this looks like, go to alchemistnation.com, click on the mentorship link and learn a little bit about it. It's free. And if you haven't gone to alchemistnation.com and message one of our millionaires or one of our future millionaires or one of our wholesalers or agents or business owners or lenders or contractors, man, you're missing out on the coolest community that I've ever been a part of. Let's give every one of you guys a round of applause. I love each and every one of you. It's, it's impressive. Now, each week we do something impressive that Michael Schein started and he presented it to us. There's 52 wealth principles. Each one of those wealth principles carries with it a book that embodies the principle itself. This week is one of my, fav my personal favorite books. In fact, I was talking about it yesterday. Michael Schein, do you have the book of the week with you? Uh, I have the book product. of the week. I have the book of the week, but it's on Audible. Um, so yes, yeah, so the book of the week is the E Myth for Real Estate Investors, which is oh, nice job. Is that that's the is that the Real Estate Investors one, or is that just the E Myth? Okay. So whatever you need it to be. Okay, cool. So <laughs> what's kind of cool is that this community is a community of real estate investors. Wow, what a coincidence! <laughs> and. Uh, um, so the E-Myth for Real Estate Investors, uh, we all love the E-Myth books. It's really great. The, the whole series is awesome for systematizing. I actually have the one E-Myth for Lawyers, um, which I got for people in my office. And there's the real estate one. And what's kind of cool is that Michael Gerber, uh, he, um, he uh, gets people who are superstars in those industries and gets them to write. And if you listen to it on Audible, it's like a chapter of Michael, and then it's a chapter of, in this case, Than Merrill, chapter Michael, and it keeps going through. 
So I recommend Emith Revisited, the one that uh, Terry held up. That's like the, the first one, and it's in our 52 Weeks of Wealth, and it'll teach you about systematizing and teaching you why McDonald's just was an amazing system so that if you buy a Big Mac in California or you buy a Big Mac in Rhode Island, it's the same Big Mac. That's system systemization. Anyway, uh, but then what's great about this book is since we're all, uh, most of us are real estate investors, uh, this takes it to that next level and shows you how to re uh, do it with real estate. And um, if you don't know what Dan Merrill is, he's, uh, he's one of the founders of Fortune Builders. And so he knows a little bit about growing a very large real estate uh, business. And so it's, it's a great book, uh, especially for this community. So I highly recommend it and uh, jump on it. I would recommend reading the E-Myth uh, Revisited first and then jump it on this one second. And that's my review. Thank you. Let's give Michael Shine a round of applause. The E-Myth. The E-Myth for real estate investors. Now I've read every iteration of the E-Myth that Michael Gerber and his partners have put out including the e-myth for landscapers and the e-myth for attorneys, the e-myth for uh, real estate agents, real estate brokers, real estate investors. And the reason is I really, really do like to build businesses. I really love being able to teach and share ideas and concepts with people. And what I loved about the e-myth is that Michael Gerber wasn't, we wasn't just taking his own experience saying, yeah, I could basically teach real estate investors. What he did is he went out and he grabbed an expert in the industry who was doing it and then brought them on as an expert and said, hey, would you do this book with me? We're going to use my principles and see if they're tied together and you, you do it yourself. Like, get the audio on this book. Who's already committed to listen to this one this week? The, the E-Myth, yes, for real estate investors. Get the audio book and listen because it, it, it is actually Than Merrill and Michael Gerber who do the audio together. And they do every other chapter is Than, and every other chapter is um, Michael Gerber. Now, the first time I went through this, I listened to both. The second time I went through it, I only listened to Than Merrill. He talks faster. <laughs> it's more relevant to, to the business. And I really, I really, really enjoy his mindset. I, to I, to I totally agree with that. It's tough to listen to Michael on Audible. You'd be better <laughs> off reading this one. Michael is getting a little old. <laughs> you know? Yes, I, I feel like his voice is breaking down. So, yeah, e yeah. Go, go back and listen to the original e myth. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and, and listen to it a little faster because he talks very slow. And then uh, the new version, like the, the real estate investor, you can listen to just skip his chapters, right? He doesn't really add that much extra value. So, the, the important factor that we pulled out of the e myth is the four types of money. Ladies and gentlemen, take this week to spend some time on those four. Identify where your flow is at. There, there may be anxiety around the flow, and that's okay too. But get, get a little more fun around it. Get a little more fun around increasing and automating your income flows, the marketing, the sales, the customer service that is driving traffic into your business, you know, the property management, the raising of rents, you know, marketing of rents acquiring of more assets that have rents in our real estate investor world. Answer the camera if you commit to increasing income. We're going to automate and scale the automation. Yes. Some of that may be spent on ads, like we're spending ads on the training company right now, we're spending more than we've ever spent. And we're going to keep spending more as the ads create flow, as the ads continue to generate income, we'll continue to expand out. This is how businesses grow. In fact, I was telling Ron, Amazon exploded. And Ron says, I don't know. I don't see Amazon ads. It's because Ron has ad blockers. He never sees any ads. Amazon always owns the top spot on any Google search because they started buying Google leads when they were cheap and they kept expanding and increasing their budget as Google leads went and cost more. They took more ground. It was a land grab and they just kept pushing and scaling and taking more of those leads, more of the, that cost was as Google costs came up, Amazon's income went up, they kept spending. Hence the camera, if you understand, marketing should be a, a percentage of your sales. It should be driving back a percentage of your sales. Marketing dollars should double your money. If you don't make double on the marketing, you're, you gotta adjust your marketing, you gotta tweak. You, but you should, every month, 25% of what you make, 20%, 25%. Hey, what's up, guys? Should be going back into marketing, 
back in the driving more business and you should be getting 20%, you know, that 20% should be doubling itself. So you should be a hundred percent return on the marketing money. If you're not fix your marketing, keep tweaking, don't stop spending. This making sense. We're getting this, get more leads, get more deals. You get all, all the money. Awesome. Go to alchemistnation.com. Check out the mentorship. I want to open it up to the coaches so we can get some of our millionaire coaches, ideas, strategies. Let's give everybody on the call a round of applause while I pause, while I pause and stop the recording. Awesome. And let's start with, if he's still on the call, Ryan McDermott. I know you're playing snow soccer ball. He's gone. What about Doug McGurk? Is Doug on the call? He's gone. Man, these guys with families. You know what I'm going to go with? Michael Shine. He just brought his family with him. <laughs> I was trying to fit in with Kevin and Brian having their, their sons in the, in, the, in the Zoom call. It's awesome. Uh, wow. Yeah, I love this uh, because I think that for me in the past couple of years, flow was tricky for me. Like I get... I get income, I get profit, I get equity, uh, but flow, I didn't really understand it. So reviewing it this year and you talking about it, money comes in and money goes out. And it's, and that's, that was uh, just a simple way to do it. And so it, these are so important. I just love this. And my favorite thing is obviously equity. I just love it. We're talking with Brenda this morning about, you know, we have our, our, our bookkeeper sending us profit and loss. And you can see your, you know, the money, coming in from each individual prop property and it's going up while the mortgage, the mortgage, uh, the, you know, the total amount is going down, down, down. It's, it's really exciting. So yeah, it's just stick with this community and you'll be where I am in two years. It's so awesome. Thank you. Let's give Michael Shine a round of applause. He is too humble to mention. Mike has his new book coming out on partnerships, but before the book is released, He's creating a course right now for Alchemist Nation that is a partnership course. It's going to teach you how to identify the right partners, how to move them across to become trustworthy, how to get the right agreements uh, put together. Mike is not selling agreements. That's one thing he told me. He's like, he's like, I don't want to do agreements. So he will be referring people out to the right attorneys who can do the agreements for you. Mike just wants to make sure that you understand how to become a trustworthy person so you can attract trustworthy partners. You first have to become trustworthy so you can identify what that looks like in somebody else. As within, so without, you first must become in order to attract. Hence, you can't forget, and it's going to be super valuable for Mike to put this course out there. Excellent. I mapped it out with him last time we gave it an overview. So over the next couple of weeks, he and I will be creating it and putting it out. So just like Michael Gerber did with the E-Myth, I'm going to the experts. Mike has more partnerships than I do, and he's made a ton of money through his partnerships. And Mike is the guy who will tell you, I don't ever want to lift a hand. I don't want to lift a finger. I don't want to do any work. I want them to do the work. And his partners will tell you the same thing. They're like, man, I, I love taking Mike's money and put it into deals. I love doing the work. I love the projects. Because Mike has found and identified who he is and who he's, he wants to partner with. So he's going to be creating a great course for us. Let's give Michael Shine one more round of applause. It's valuable that the coaches keep leveling up. And fortunately, before we used to just do these as live events. So if you missed it, you missed it. Now we're doing them and we're recording them so that they can be on the platform forever. This is automation. We're catching this. Learn it, do it, automate it. This way we can build and scale, help more people on a larger scale. And we won't be charging for that course. Is that cool? Hence the camera if it's cool that we're doing this so that People can watch and learn for free. This is what it means. This is the highest and most, it can be a lot of work to donate your time. I know, trust me, I get it. But donating your time as a millionaire is far more valuable than donating your money. And Mitch Jorsky just did a call last night. He just did a, a training course for us last night on Alchemist Nation. Let's give Mitch a round of applause. He's been working very hard at figuring out the platform, creating courses, creating videos. Mitch, what is your takeaway on Wealth Principle 3? Don't worry, Terry. I'm um, saving the best for last. Organize and collect. <laughs> organize and collect. <laughs> um, so, you know, when Mike was talking and he's talking about money comes in, money comes out, um, and forgive the way my brain works, all I could think of was my favorite movie, Happy Gilmore. And when the guy's talking about it's circular, 
You got to get in the flow. It goes up and down and around and around. And you know what? It's true. We got to get in the flow. So Mike's in the flow and the money goes up and down and around and around. And he puts the money out and it seems to come back, but it comes back as more all the time. I don't know how he does it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to channel this energy. Uh, actually, I am channeling this energy. There you go. <laughs> so uh, it's, a it. it. it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, that's funny that that popped up because I actually finally had a rap quote lined up. I know I've been failing you in the recent weeks and no rap quotes. So uh, Drake said, you know, oh, well, you lose some, you win some as long as the outcome is income. Let's so give Mitch Chorsky a round of applause. That's a mic drop. You got and you, you got to set out. up things that have an outcome of income and that, you know, we, we joke and say organize and collect, you know, and it's just kind of a tagline. But if you really think about it, that's what it is. Like you're organizing to create an outcome of income, um, whether it's through, you know, you do marketing, you teach for free, whatever it is, you're building something that eventually creates income, ideally income on autopilot, or at least income that you can systematize where you're taking yourself out of it 90%. And that is what the e-myth really is about. If you read that book, you're going to realize that, oh, crap, I'm building myself a job, not a business. But that's fine at first because you're every single job. And that's why you build out that blueprint because it's like every role, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you're, you're that person for every, every role. But as you expand your business, you're hiring someone for role A. You're hiring someone for role B, right? And you get to the point where now there is an employee for every one of those roles. And now you're just overseeing it, managing it. And essentially, what did you do? You organized and now you're collecting. So just keep that basic um, ideology in mind and you'll be all right over the long term. But it's going to take a little time to get there. So you got to do like the, ga- the great guru once said from Gangstar, you got impu- to put in work and you got to watch your status escalate. So don't be afraid to put in the work. And like Walter already says, Give me, give me three years, five years max, three to five years. And that's the problem. People don't want to spend three years to be able to enjoy the next 30. So don't be short-sighted, put in the work, organize and collect, and you'll be all right. Let's give Mitch Shorsky one more round of applause. Organize and collect. Mitch has a new course on Alchemist Nation called something around... Crypto. I can't remember the name of the course. What? Which, what oh, well, it? yeah, we did. Uh, I threw. I put up the Crypto Newbie course, which, um, you know, also Tuesdays at 630. I kind of do loosely that anyway. That's a free call where I teach people the bare basics so they're not afraid of crypto. So then they're ready for things like the crypto workshop on March 9th, where I'm going to drop NFT knowledge on you, show you where you can get the NFTs. I'm going to show you what DeFi is and just even just how to, you know, invest in cryptos that you're interested in like why it's like why do i want to buy this coin well here these are this is the blueprint i use to decide what coins i'm going to buy so march 9th 7 p.m uh is going to be that one uh but if you want to warm up for that feel free to join me tuesdays at 6 30 uh, i can drop links to both and we'll get you uh comfortable with crypto because that seems to be the roadblock for everyone they're just afraid of it because they don't know what it is and for everybody who is a real estate investor wondering why the heck are we talking about cryptocurrency, it's because every real estate investor I know more successful than me, not as successful as me or at my level is investing in crypto or asking me questions about crypto. And so I asked him, I asked Mitch if he could do, because he's been in this since 2016. He's been in it far longer than I have. And he's the source of knowledge that I get before I go and make investments. So it really made sense for, since everybody's doing it, we don't want anybody losing money or sending money to the crypto gods. We want we want you to increase your net worth, increase your income. So invest properly in crypto, get to learn the basics, use this course, use Mitch's free calls. You're gonna learn a lot of uh, valuable information. And yes, if he does offer his higher level uh, mastermind or uh, yeah, it's a mastermind call, crypto mastermind, then it's only because you're at that level where it might make sense. And he's concerned that you might invest mass dollar amounts into crypto and he wants to make sure to watch you during the process. Hence the camera if that's okay too. Yes, it's for a reason. If He won't invite you if you don't have masses of dollars to put into it, so don't worry. Dr. Terry Wager, your take on Wealth Principle 3. My take is Doug is ready to go. So- oh, is Doug in here? Yeah. 
Doug, rock and roll, your take on Wealth Principle 3. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of, lot of fires coming. Uh, so, always brilliant. Um, and uh, what about restrictions? Well, currency, for a reason, you buy the current. It's getting in the low. Doug, your, uh, your service is not so good. Your, your service is coming through pretty copy right now. So while we're waiting for Doug McGurk to give his feedback, which, by the way, if you weren't there, you missed Master of Influence. Who's seen the video that we posted yesterday from a little recap of Master of Influence? I posted on YouTube, posted on Facebook, and I also posted on Alchemist Nation. I got to say thank you for all those testimonials. Like we saw the transformation. You know, we saw everybody moving and engaging, but like when you guys were in front of the camera and just sharing from the heart, like what your experience was, I, I, put, I was crying a little bit. Like when I watched the video the first time, like it's so amazing to, to be able to see the transformations, but it's a whole other experience to hear, you know, what, what it's the impact that we're having on you guys. Each one of you is, is an asset to me. I look at, you know, I know your situation. I know your families. I know, you know, why you're working the way you're working. You know, it's, it just means so much. So, um, you know, for anybody who, who has had an opportunity to give us a testimonial, thank you. I watched them all. I listened to them all. And the video guys chose the best ones to put in that video. But thank you, each one of you. Let's give yourselves a round of applause. It means a lot to me that you're taking your, your life your success this seriously and to be a part of it, to be a part of your journey is just, it's huge. It's so cool. And for everybody who's wearing one of our shirts, I see Kim Possible wearing names on deeds. Throw the shirts up, 100 millionaires. The point is not to work, it's to generate income. Mission to millions, names on deeds. We got, we got a lot of people who are motivated. There it is, there it is, names on deeds. 100 millionaires. Doug McGurk, he's in the All library, right. back in his house. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. All right. Yeah, Kevin, that is our library. That's one of our bookshelves. Uh, so what I was getting at, the, one of the points about uh, the word currency, like we we're talking about getting in the flow, it's called currency for a reason. Like we ride the currents, right? And, and it's knowing how to ride that wave is really powerful. And then another distinction uh, that, you know, brilliant as always, and um, I'm sure that we we all can benefit from compound interest in all of this. And this is vital. The most powerful force is compound interest. But I, I want to give another spin on it because we're talking a lot about money. And what sometimes people get stuck is that when we don't have maybe the money, the flow, like you were sharing earlier, and thank you for your vulnerability, is that we have our most valuable asset is our relationships. Build and invest in your relationships, which will then create reciprocity that will then invite opportunity. Uh, I'll give you a great example real quickly. This week, this week I, I was uh, doing a training in Denver. And it was a big internet company. They're like one of the premier Google partners. And so I, I just introduced myself. And, you know, not to say, I'm, I'm not, a, I don't want to sound horrible. It's just, it's, I work from the top down is I introduced myself to the, well, I mean, I was a trainer there, so I was already, I had status, but I always go to the leaders. I find the leaders and then I invest in them. So first thing I do is when I may build some rapport is I give them resources. I'm like, oh, hey, do you know Scott Kosowski? No, well, he's like, he'd be a perfect resource for you. You guys match, it's, this would be a great resource. And I connected them right there. And another, the girl who's done the marketing, she's in charge of the marketing for this major company. And I want to do some training with them too, right? So now here I am, I'm giving uh, extra training. I'm reaching out and investing into the group, not expecting anything in return, obviously looking for it, but not expecting it. I didn't say, hey, now that I hooked you up with Scott, now that I hooked you up with Amanda, now, uh, hey, right? But it happens naturally. So if ever you're feeling like you don't have the cash flow, the equity, you have relationship equity, you have relationship like investment opportunities, and your, your phone, your email, your computer is one of your greatest resources. So you, we have no excuse to ever feel in some sort of uh, um, scarcity or lack, because if you're in this community, you are already abundant. So that's all I have to say about that. Doug, since you're on the camera, you got to show off your shirt again. You're, you're rocking the same shirt. All the coaches are, are rocking. Go ahead. There you go. 
There it is. Hundred millionaires. What that means is we're building a hundred millionaires. Each one of us who wears the shirt has the intention to one day have a hundred people say, yeah, I'm a millionaire because of that person. So give yourselves a round of applause. If you own the shirt, wear it proudly. It doesn't mean you're building a hundred millionaires yesterday. It means they're coming. It means you're doing it. Same with names on deeds. You're putting your name on deeds. Some of you are real estate agents. You're putting other people's names on deeds and your name on deeds. Some of your wholesalers doing the same thing, putting people's names on deeds. I love it. This is a powerful community. We keep growing. Dr. Terry Wager, we save the best for last. Although Mike Shine normally does take the role of the best. Uh, you know. Lead the I, role, I my friend. Damn good. <laughs> Wealth um, principle three. Wealth principle three. You know, Mitch was talking about you are your business. And Doug is talking about relationships are your capital to make the money that you're looking for. And of course we need an income. And one of the things that Gwalter and myself stress to all of the people that come in here is don't quit your income job until you start to replace your income job with the cash flow of your properties because we end up in scarcity, fight or flight, end up stuck if we don't have an income. And income is kind of one of those things like food. You have to have something to eat, otherwise you're gonna die. Cash flow is, for me, the next step where I start to have the income and I can start feeding my business back money to in increase my income. Then profit comes off of what I can siphon off to start using for other things. And so it's a very, very systematic kind of idea. And there's got to be a strategy involved in everything we're doing. Um, the reality is, is so many businesses over the last two years have closed and, you know, COVID is a reason, but that's not the reason. The reason is because people run out of ideas, not money. They run out of ideas and then they just start using the same old idea over and over and over again to try to increase their income. They're not thinking about cash flow. They're not thinking about how to increase their equity in things. They're thinking about one thing, income, and if you're only thinking about what you're eating, as soon as it's gone, you're done. And so you want to have an idea of all four ways to increase your income. You want to have a strategy to build your equity. You also want to have a strategy to build your profit to increase your equity. And so all of these four pieces work together as a puzzle. It does start with income because if you don't have that, well, you're going to have a problem. But even before that, you got to get your mind right and you got to get your relationships right. And that's two of the things that we really focus on at Generator first is getting your mind right and getting your relationships right. Because if you don't have your mind right, nobody's going to want to do business with you. And if nobody wants to do business with you, it's going to be hard to have those relationships Doug was talking about. Talking about. And so the whole system starts with you and it starts with you being able to see yourself better and when you can see yourself better you can start really putting a strategy together with an awareness of how to grow so that's what we're talking about this morning and you know I love this topic and I love that we every week come in here and start thinking about a different business principle a different wealth principle because when we really start to look at these things and become aware of them, that's the biggest reason we grow. It's not because we grind it out. It's because of the awareness around where we want to go and how we want to get there. Let's give Dr. Terry Wager a round of applause. You mentioned something that got me excited for a second. Emotional intelligence is something that Dr. Terry Wager ran a course on for years about just getting your mind right and getting the emotions right so that you can fly through the business process. Hands to the camera if it would be huge if I could get Dr. Terry Wager to do his emotional intelligence course and record it onto Alchemist Nation for everybody. <laughs> yes, I thought so. Mm. I thought so. Because in the beginning, the reason Terry didn't sell emotional intelligence to the community, the reason he shifted over and said, hey, I'm going to help you make your money, because that's where this community was. Everybody was just like, yeah, I want to make more money. I want to make more money. But now I believe that people are ready to become leaders. People are ready to become managers. People are ready to create cultures in their business. And that comes from emotional intelligence. 
Hands to the camera if you know that would scale your business significantly faster than any how-to training. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are the cause. You are the source. You are the salvation to scaling your business to get to the next level. Let's give Dr. Terry Wager a round of applause for the courses that are coming. <laughs> awesome. At this point, I want to thank each and every one of you for your dedication. And I'm going to thank you for the questions that are about to come. Every single week, I like to open it up to new people. So Ron, Terry, Ryan, guys who are running the uh, the attendees room, let's bring in anybody who's not on camera right now. And we can start opening this up to people outside of the mentorship for any questions you have to, that you want to ask. And then we're going to allow, obviously, the people in the mentorship to continue the dialogue we started earlier today. Right. Anything you want to share, any wins or challenges, this is your chance. Hey, Go ahead. Down. Was that an example of a hard close on Terry? That was that was an example of seeding. It was suggesting. <laughs> that was an example of <laughs> Kevin. That was an example of I was like leverage. Sweet. He pressure. finally did it to someone else besides me. <laughs> hey, I, I was on a call last night with Ryan McDermott for about an hour, getting Ryan to teach a course on tax strategies. Uh, getting him to teach a course on how to advantage the community to taxes for our, our higher net worth uh, people. He's not on the call right now, but I, oh, there he is. Yeah. Hands to the camera if you're interested in Ryan getting this course done in the next week or two. Excellent. Awesome. And then Mike Shine, again, was on the call earlier in the day. So Mitch, you're not the only one getting the pressure from me. Every one of the coaches is getting a conversation. Look, guys, I've created 15 courses on the platform catch up let's get let's just each get one <laughs> that kevin that kevin is the hard close <laughs> i'll slice it up to the community uh vincent i saw you uh, you unmuted the mic go ahead brother yes i have a question when you're analyzing the deal what percentages do you use normally roughly on capex repairs and etc it depends on the age of the property. So if the property hasn't been renovated, you know, in the last 20 years, I'm putting a much higher number on CapEx. In fact, Mitch is probably the better person to answer this. Go ahead, Mitch. I know you're, you're dying. Well, I mean, you know what it is. I mean, it depends on the size of the property in a way, but honestly, like when you're talking about small multifamily, which I mean, I guess you could debate on what number that levels off, levels off at, but you know, just to use an arbitrary number, like anything that's, you know, less than 20 units, honestly, the roundabout estimate is generally 5% for maintenance and 5% for CapEx. Now, you also want to factor in, you know, what class property it is. I mean, if it's A class, then yeah, 5% all day. If it's C class, it's like, what kind of shape is it in? Maybe do I want to tweak a little bit on CapEx? You know, if you're going D class, then you're going to want to bump those numbers. But 5% is your baseline. And then you just, it's like anything else. You have essentially these estimates, you know, these rough ideas, and then you tweak it based on the property and based on, you know, uh, the condition of it and where it is. So um, a quick example is like, I have a four family I bought like a year and a half ago. When I ran the numbers, yeah, I put 5% CapEx in there. I damn well knew my CapEx was going to be higher than that because there was deferred maintenance I knew I was going to be doing over the next couple of years because, you know, it was fully occupied and I wasn't going to clear it out. So I tweaked that number. Um, but that was kind of over the near term. So over the long term, I'm like, well, what is this going to look like? You know, once I get this deferred maintenance done, what's it going to look like from a cash flow perspective over the next, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years? So just use, you know, 5%, 5% as a basis, and then you can tweak it and cater it to the property and then, and, and, you know, and the uh, class that it is. Thank you. And, and to, to give like personal experience, um, we picked up 24 units and our cat, our, our uh, CapEx is around 15% on that for the first three years of owning it. You know, now it's reducing. And we had a, we had a 10 unit that we picked up, I want to say five years ago. Wow, Ron, it's been a while. So five years and that one, the first three years was probably even higher than that 15%. It was maybe even closer to 20. And that was just C, my, C minus, or maybe even a D class building that we moved up to a C class and that, you know, you got to just look at how much deferred maintenance. That one probably had 20 years of deferred maintenance on it. Just nobody ever fixed anything. And, uh, but we knew that getting into, it. we picked it up for 350,000. It just got appraised to 850. So 
we're we're okay on that property and it's gotten to the point where the rents when we got into that building 600 dollars a month they're now at a thousand to twelve hundred so you know you when you get into those rougher ones yeah a lot of the money is going into the capex but eventually now we're at a point where we're probably that five percent we're probably around that average five percent on that building and it's been five years and we're just you know we, we will not sell that building <laughs> so <laughs> good let's give vincent a round of applause great question absolutely brother is there a follow-up to it um not to that but actually one other question <laughs> um I have two properties. Do you say just let the, just pay the, they're on 30 year notes. Um, tenants are paying them off. Um, I'm wondering if I should, do I add extra to the mortgage payment? Oh, A little bit extra every month or do I just let them pay for it? And Vincent, I got to thank you, man. Thank you so much for asking this question. So this is a question that I think everybody should be asking themselves. And I want everyone listening to the answer here. Do not pay the mortgage down now. Stack cash. We are in, I posted an article in Alchemist Nation a couple days ago or a week ago, and we are now in a point of hyperinflation. Hyperinflation has hit the market. We've been in this inflation for the last probably two, three years. And I see deflation on the horizon. I see a deflationary time coming on the horizon. Right now, cash is cheap. Take the cash, keep the cash, take the debt, right? As long as the portfolio can handle the debt, take the debt. You know, be borrowing money and don't pay down the mortgages in an accelerated manner right now. You wanna be taking that money and storing it in cash in a boring asset class. And you may wanna do the infinite banking system because at least you're gonna be fighting the inflation on some level. Right, putting the money into a, a cash account where you are earning that six percent. And I've I have never in the past liked those systems. So just so you know, like financial advisors are always pushing them and talking about them. I've never in the past wanted to hold a cash position. But now where the market is going and turning, I'm suggesting more and more don't use your own cash in deals. Put your cash in the bank, put your cash in a place where it can make some sort of interest, but hold its value. You do not want cash in the markets. This is, you know, my personal like barbell theory. Right now is the time to stack cash while cash is cheap. And when the markets are turning, you have money to invest. I've been watching Mitch Jorsky do this. He's been stacking cash, stacking cash. Crypto market took a turn. He started pushing cash into the crypto market. This is what he studies. This is what he knew how to do. And he still holds a cash position. And he's keeping an eye on a, a further drop if something happens. And he's taking profits as he can. Like, so... I don't want you to get too complex on this. To answer the question the right way, do not pay down mortgages <laughs> unless you're 75 years old. If you're 75 and that is your strategy to get extra cash flow is to get rid of that debt, cool. Anybody under 75, this is the chance for you to stack up more cash so that when cash is king, when, when everybody's saying the bank won't lend me money, I have no money. The properties are selling because people just need cash. They need the cash back. That's when you want to have the cash position. So stack cash for now. Put things into cash assets and, and hold for the next two, three, four years. And maybe six years. But I really think keep an eye on 2024, ladies and gentlemen. The end of 2023, 2024, keep an eye on it. There's a lot of things that will just be cracking at that point. But 2025, there's so many moving pieces, so many like big pieces, not interest rates. We're talking population changes that are going to force people to not want the single family homes anymore. So just really, really be keeping an eye on that. Uh, Vincent, uh, kind of a loaded, uh, long answer to that question, but <laughs> was that helpful? Does that help? Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, uh, so let's give Vincent a round of applause. <laughs> Lewis has a question that I'm going to read real quick. Uh, he typed it in the Q&A. Uh, what are your thoughts in investing in new construction projects that offer multifamily development, commercial, and hotel? No. Question mark. For me, no. Not even close. Not even remotely interested in hotels Why? right now. Because the market, the, the first thing to get crushed in a down market is new construction, luxury, hotels, and uh, condos. So we're avoiding all four of those at the height of the market. We are at the height. 
There is no question about it. Now, have those developers and builders been getting be, becoming millionaires or multimillionaires? Hell yeah, they have. That's why I'm not investing in, in their assets right now. For what I'm interested in, assisted living, right? If you're developing assisted living, that would make sense. That's an asset class I think is going to be strong for the next hundred years because big populations will continue to be pumping into that age range. The baby boom generation is the oldest are at 75 right now and the youngest are in their late 50s. So that generation is about to be the biggest customer client base for us over the next 30 years. They will be moving into these retirement homes and assisted livings. So that's the only development I'd, I'd even consider right now. And if you want more information on that, watch the podcast episode I did with Vinny Chopra uh, this week. That guy, that's all he's doing. He's going to build $2 billion worth of assisted livings. So that, that to me is an interesting asset class. All the other ones, hell no, stay away. And sorry, Lewis, I, I know it's not what you want to hear, but because I know he's doing, he's doing one of some of those developments, but man, you, you were taking a massive risk and well, I, I have no interest. I, I think the reality is, is he does want to hear that because he doesn't want to make that mistake if that's a mistake. Um, and there's plenty of strategies to do. Just one of the things that I think about a lot is there's a lot of people making money right now on the multifamilies, on the on the moderate multifamilies, five to 15 units. Just do what the people in here are doing. Don't reinvent the wheel and you'll have some success. And then once you have the cash flow, once you have the equity, and if you really, really want to build something, then you can. But there you go. And, and like you're doing, Terry, sober housing, right? Like that's that's another asset that makes a lot of sense to me. There's a ton of cash in it. There's a ton of right. need for it. There's a big demand for it. And there's it's just so misunderstood. So many investors avoid it. So that creates a, a vacuum in the system of, of demand. And so like what you're doing out there makes a ton of sense. You know, so it's sober housing and assisted living. I'll, I'll put those two as my favorite yeah, developments. One of the... One of the biggest things that uh, has been a problem with the sober housing is the governments get involved and the the recovery people get involved from the recovery point instead of the real estate point. And so that's one of the things that's really cool about our project is we're going from a real estate state of mind and now we're going and building the relationships. And I mean, I have a lot of relationships in, real, in, in the um, recovery community because I'm in recovery. But at the same time, we're not going from 25 years, 25 years in recovery. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty impressive. 26. Who's counting? Yeah. And so the idea is really getting to know and create the relationships like Doug was talking about is huge because uh, that's what really swings the big doors is those little relationships, those little entrances in to really understand the market. Uh, but if you go and do it the same way everybody's always done it, you get the same results. And so we're using a real estate model in the situation. And I mean, we don't know if it's going to work. We're super excited about it. We have a lot of money and a lot of people behind us. However, it, it still is in the visionary stage. And so we're moving forward, but um, it makes more sense than just going in and attempting to do something in a market like this. Can, nice can job, I add something Terry. to nice, all of this? Nice, I just want to say nice job, Terry. Way to, way to get out there. That's so awesome. Thank you. Yes. Mitch. Yeah, yeah no, that's... Uh, Terry's making a huge move that's so undercover. Eventually, he'll, he'll share it once, uh, I guess, it's uh, to fruition. But anyway, um, everything these guys are saying is like so on point, but it's also got me thinking about how, you know, remember, nothing's black and white. You know, it's not an on-off switch here. Like, and everything is somewhat situational in that <clears throat> like what Walter's saying I hear and I'm like yes all that means is I can still do some of these things but I'm not going to be as aggressive as I would be if it was 2015 right there's times to put your foot on the pedal and push it to the floor and then there's times to put cruise control on and just go at a nice even pace right so that's what you need to keep in mind because like for an example, and I've been talking about it for two years now, if someone came to me and said, you know, I want to build multifamily in Ocala, Florida, I would be like, sign me the hell up. I don't care what kind of marker we're in, what cycle we're in, because it's Florida. There's only so many places that Florida aren't built up yet. People keep moving here. Even in a bad economy, people are going to keep moving here. 
Like it's an aberration. So it's like, you still got to pay attention to opportunities within any market. So the point of that is you don't be as, as aggressive when you're in riskier markets. But if you find situations and deals that, you know, are what I call like layups, it's kind of like what stocks and, and crypto, like people are like, oh, do you day trade? I'm like, no, I'm like, because A, that's a job, but B, I'd rather just sit on my hands and wait for the Captain Obvious trade. The one that is a high likelihood of me having success. So do the same thing with real estate. You know, even if we're in, you know, let's just say hypothetically, we're in a risky, you know, market, we're at the top of the market, there's still some Captain Obvious plays out there, right? So you can still push forward with those, but you're not going to be as aggressive. You're not going to speculate as much. So that's just kind of like a mindset you want to keep. Um, but yeah, if something's like, ah, I'm rolling the dice on this one, maybe now's not the time to be rolling the dice, but you still want to do deals that make sense. Um, you just want to pay attention to that risk scale now compared to, you know, where you would do it years ago. I, you know, I love it. And I want to say something real quick. Uh, yeah. About what? Uh, Mitch was talking about with the gas pedal. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. I think you're action. saying what I was about to say. Yeah. Go ahead. The bullet train action, right? We're, we're talking about going as fast as you can, but we want to be prudent about the speed and we want to make sure that we have the steps in place. And so what we're really looking at is taking the trash off the track so you can go as fast as you want to within the strategic reasoning. And so you don't want to just go 90 miles an hour off a cliff. You know, or 150. Um, right. Either way, you're going off the cliff. Slow down. Make sure there's no cliffs. Make sure there's no trash on the track, so you can go as fast as the the market determines, as fast as your plan determines, as fast as your relationships determine. But don't be going too fast, so you're causing yourself more stress, more tension, because everything is in its time. But having the track cleared, you can go as fast as time will allow. I love that. So, so I want to add one more aspect to this. Think of it more like taking an exit on the highway. You got the gas pedal, you're, you're gunning through. You don't take every exit if you know where you're looking to go. Does that make sense? So you may, it may not make sense to invest in a particular deal. That doesn't mean there isn't another deal at the next exit that will make a ton of sense. And that's, that's what we're looking at is we don't buy things that don't make sense. We don't make buy things that don't make dollars. So it's got to have a high ROI. It's got to be a very realistic ROI that isn't based on appreciation in, in this market. I like what Mitch said about Florida markets, you know, absolutely, but not at Florida market prices right now. But if you could get, like we always say, the purchase price 20% 20, 20 lower than what the market is demanding, then yes, that makes sense. We're catching this. So we have to invest with the fundamentals. We're sticking to the fundamentals. And in a market like this, it's okay to go even faster and just skip more exits. Does that make sense? Review more deals and, and put in more offers at the price that would make sense. And if somebody does accept an offer, take that exit. We're getting this? We're, we understand. This is, you know, it's a great time to invest in the right assets. It's a great time to invest in your business and scaling your business, anything that pulls in cash right now is a great opportunity to invest for cash flow for increased income because cash is cheap. Get as much of it as you can, put it aside for the opportunities that are ahead. Get cash. Don't, don't be like holding back, like take the money. There's so much money in the market, more than I've ever, ever seen in my entire career and the entire time I've been alive. There's currently more money in the market, more money being lent, more money being handed around, more money being spent, more money being invested. If you don't have the money, you're messing up. But there is more money currently in existence than there has ever been in the entire history of our planet and the monetary system. And it frustrates me that people don't understand how much money there really is, especially when they're like, oh, it's so hard. There's no money. No, man. Like, open your fucking eyes. There is money literally everywhere right now. I got money. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Kim. Sorry for the, the little one swear. One swear in a, an entire day. That's not bad. <laughs> the, the money is flowing. Guys, gals, take it receive be willing to make some commitments hold some some value for people receive that money it's everywhere right it's just flow i'm seeing too much of it in fact here's the deal i'm doing right now who's be interested in seeing the deal i'm doing in floor uh fall right now you guys want to check it out i threw hold on i threw some music to it too 
Check did you out. did you just bring up the metaverse? That looked like the metaverse. Metaverse, man. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the future. Here we go. Are we are we watching you dance, we or are we going to see a presentation? We're just watching Walter move around. With oh, hold on. Yeah, see it? No, oh, we're seeing those glasses. Oh, divine oh. providence. And I gotta show you. I gotta show you this thing. We had a nice cool quote. I can see myself in your glasses. There we go. <laughs> That's better. They said I had a parking issue. I said, nope, we're going to park the cars vertically. There is no problem that can't be solved with a little creativity. Right, Terry? Little ideas. Absolutely. New York City awesome. style. So, Zachary has another question um, yeah. that's typed in the chat. And he says, that's hilarious. I was dancing, huh? That's it? You didn't see the car? Oh, man. We, we, we did dance. all of the rest yeah, after awesome dancing. But we got really good for about 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, it was awesome dancing with the glass. It was good. It was good. I, love, I just loved watching the video. I watched it so many times. I, I just I get all excited every time I see it. Go ahead, Terry. Zachary asks, folks who work with leaders in the industry, what do you find are the best ways to add value to new existing relationships, i.e. connecting with people with more relationships, providing resources? Uh, thank you. And... Um, if you want to take a stab at this, I, you can. I can. I can tell you a, a story about what I'm working on right now. Uh, yeah, I'll take a stab, and then you run a story into it. All right. Ask them. Simplest thing. Ask them what What are you looking for? And then listen. Go ahead, Terry. Tell us a story about that. <laughs> so, I'm doing this project out in Portland, and. While I'm in the community, I don't have the ties to the the deeper um, roots of the community like some of the other people I know. And I met a guy who has very deep roots that ha is very interested in what I'm doing. And so I want him to be a part of what I'm doing. Um, number one, it creates a little bit more comfort for me, like a, a little bit more stability in what I'm doing and how I'm going it also gives me much more direction. And so I just simply said, look, I really like what you're doing. How much would you like to be involved in this project? What do you want? How can I be of service to you while you help me? And he tells me what he wants. He tells me what he's interested in. He tells me, and so it's a simple conversation. It goes right back to what Walter said. You ask them what they want. You know, so often we go right to money. We go right to, I'll pay you. They don't want that. Nobody really wants money. They want what the money will buy. But if you can provide it for them, and by the way, this is blue fishing. This is what Steve Sim talks about. If you can provide something that somebody would be attempting to buy with money, and you don't need the money to do it, you have a connection. You have a relationship. You have the item they're looking for whatever it is, you can start connecting people with what they want without money. And so it's really about understanding what they want, why they want it, how they want it, and when they want it. Which reminds me, I had Steve Sims on the podcast, on the Alchemist Nation podcast, episode one, uh, 137. I'll drop the link in the chat here. You guys go check it out. Steve Sims, Blue fishing, man, like so many, so many cool strategies in that, that episode. I learned so much from Steve and what he's, he's created in the world. What else questions or comments before we jump off? I know I got a interview with Dr. Terry in a little bit. What questions do you guys have? Oh, I got one in the chat. Aleem says, my man with a reverse mortgage, is there any way an investor could do anything with it? Aliyam, I've, I've wrapped my head around these a couple times, and I don't have a good answer on, on the reverse mortgage. Maybe Mitch uh, could take a stab at this one, but anytime I see a reverse mortgage on it, I 
I typically walk away. I don't know what you would do other than because there's, there's nothing to stop paying. There's no way to do a uh, a foreclosure. Like that's the whole point in the reverse mortgage. They're going to foreclose on the house. Like that's their game is that they get access to it. Mitch Chorsky, what's your what's your feeling on the reverse mortgages as an investor? I mean, I have a limited, you know, experience looking at it, but I think we got to figure it. Well, it's like anything else. What's the spread? Like how much is the house worth and what's the reverse mortgage on it, right? I don't, I mean, I, I just find reverse, reverse mortgages um, somewhat um, ironic in that it's just a marketing term. I mean, you're basically just cashing out. Like <laughs> you own your house outright and you're basically taking like an equity line, except for it's just a mortgage. So they call it a reverse mortgage. So like anything else, it's basically just marketing. So, you know, what's the balance of that loan? Is there a spread? Because in the end, you know, the only money you're making is after you pay off that mortgage. So now I don't know the exact structure in terms of how that works. If you're allowed to just pay, I don't see why you wouldn't be allowed to just pay it outright. But again, I don't know the structures of them. I haven't done one uh, personally. You know what? My grandparents had a reverse mortgage and my mom was offered the opportunity to pay the mortgage, to, to buy the house and take over the house and pay the mortgage. And she told my grandparents, she's like, nope, not interested. So that, I think Mitch is absolutely right. So once the reverse mortgage runs out, then it goes over into you just owe a mortgage and you owe payments and the family generally will take that over. So as long as they owe less than the house is worth, why not? You know, refinance the property and purchase it traditionally, or you could, I don't know about assuming a reverse mortgage, but um, something along those lines, the bank would have a, a better conversation with that. So yeah, because awesome. I mean, in the end, it's no different if you're, you know, calling a seller lead that is in foreclosure, right? What's the first thing you're doing? You're trying to figure out, all right, how much do you owe on this? Is there a spread with the ARV? So it's, it's, it's the same blueprint, theoretically. You just need to know what's owed and if there's a spread and how do I pay it off if there's money to be made for me. So I got to say the reverse mortgage now that I'm thinking about it, is a clever strategy, right? So you, it's marketing. You're taking out a loan on their property. You, you take that money and you roll it into, you know, equities of some sort that do well. And you're just paying them a small amount every month while you've still got that money at play being used somewhere in the market. And just giving them a little, little uh, it's absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of arbitrage on that. Maybe we should start a reverse mortgage company. Uh, anybody in here? Uh, <laughs> nah, kidding, kidding. I've, I've started too many companies this year. We're going to just keep growing those for now. What else? Any other questions before we jump off the call? If not, you go to alchemistnation.com, send us messages there, create a post, leverage the mentors. I've seen a lot of our millionaires jumping in there, just offering the opportunity to answer questions. So ask questions right out in the post section. Don't be afraid to share what you got going on and find out what some of our other millionaires would suggest you do or create tools or resources. Let's give all of our millionaires a round of applause for all the donating of their time and their answers and their knowledge. Absolutely valuable resources. Thank you guys and gals. We appreciate you. I will see you on alchemistnation.com for the rest of the week. For everybody else that I have calls with, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers to your success. We have a choice. I always work with the best. With the best, the best, the best. <laughs> and again.